Hey guys, it's Kenny here from the FantasyFanatics.com and the Fantasy Golf Degenerates bringing you my cash game cornerstones for the Memorial Tournament from Murfield Village, a.k.a. Jack's Place in Dublin, Ohio. Uh, normally, I'd recap the previous week, but my real job led me to not having enough time to make my usual video. I did post my cash game cornerstones on my Twitter feed before the tournament, and all four made the cut with Kucher finishing in 13th, Tony Finau and Ollie Snyder Jans finishing in 29th, and Bud Colley finishing in 41st. Now, let's move on to this week, and it's a big one. Uh, the Memorial is probably just behind the majors and the players in prestige, and you can tell by the strength of the field, everyone wants to add a victory here to their resume. The course is a shade under 7,400 yards, and it's a par 72, featuring four par threes and four par fives. The fairways are quite wide, and nearly 70% of all drives find the short grass off the tee. There are plenty of dangers, though, if, drive, if the golfers do miss the fairways. If the rough is thick, there are well-placed fairway bunkers, and water is in play on 11 holes. Uh, the greens are a bit smaller than average. They have a lot of slope and undulation and are normally firm and fast with a stint meter rating of 13 or more. Golfers have regularly said this is probably the second fastest greens on tour other than Augusta. Now, there has been a lot of rain in the area lately, and there's supposed to be rain in the forecast throughout the tournament, and the course can play dramatically different uh, when the conditions are soft. Uh, for example, in 2013, the course you know, was dry, firm, and fast, and that year, Mirfield Village was the sixth hardest course on tour. Now you go to 2015, and you know the course was wet. There was a lot of rain in the forecast, or there was a lot of rain throughout that whole week, and the average per player score was actually under par, and it was only the 23rd most difficult course on tour in 2015. Now I'm leaning towards the course playing more like 2015 than 2013 this week. So scoring should be good, and we should see the winning score be better than 15, 16 under. I'm thinking somewhere in those high teens. Uh, this is definitely a second shot course. So the main stat I'm looking for this week is strokes gain approach. I'll also be looking at par four scoring, birdie or better percentage, and par five scoring with weighted importance in that order. Uh, on the Fantasy Fanatics cheat sheet this week, I'll be weighing stats at 45%, current form at 30%, and course history at 25%. Now let's move on to the picks. My first pick, it's going to be Adam Scott at $9,800. Now, Scott has been on a decent run lately, posting two top 10s in his last three events. And both of those top 10s have come at marquee strong field events like this one. And those are the Players and the Masters. He is an, he's also a very consistent cut maker. And he's only missed one cut on tour since September of 2015. That's right, in 20 months. He's only missed one cut. Um, he's been known throughout his career as one of the best iron players on tour. He was first in stroke scan approach last year, first in stroke scan approach in 2010. He's also finished in the top 25 in stroke scan approach three other times this decade. Now, this year, he's only 35th in stroke scan approach, which, you know, for most golfers would be ex excellent, but it's a little bit down for him uh, this year. The good thing is, in his last two events, which are the players in Wells Fargo, he's gained nearly five strokes on the field with his approaches. And at the Masters, which doesn't record strokes gained stats, he was fourth in that tournament in greens and regulation. Now, this makes me believe that he's back on track with his iron play. And with this being a second shot course, it's a, you know, a really good thing for him. As good as his iron play has been throughout the years, his putting has been his downfall. It's been downright atrocious, especially since the move away from the long putter. Uh, the last couple of years, he's been outside the top 120 in strokes game putting. But this year, he has improved remarkably as he's currently 40th in strokes game putting for the year. Now, more recently, in those same two tournaments where he gained five strokes on the field with his approaches, the players in Wells Fargo, he actually gained five and a half strokes on the field with his putter. If he can continue that upward trend in both approach shots and putting this week, I think he can win at this course where he's already had three top fives in his last seven appearances. All right, so next up, it's going to be Matt Kuchar 
at $9,400. Now, Kuchar is definitely the course horse this week, as he's finished inside the top 15 in eight of his previous nine appearances. And the one time he didn't finish top 15, he came in 26. Now, that's pretty incredible if you think about it. Eight top 15s here in his last nine tries. Now, that's not the only reason I like him and I think you should play him. He's been playing very well recently with four top 12s in his last six events. Uh, also, in his in the last couple of tournaments he's played, his iron play has been it's, it's spectacular. Uh, at the Dean and DeLuca and at the Byron Nelson Classic, he gained nearly 10 strokes on the field with his approaches in those two tourneys. Uh, I don't think I need to harp on him too much more. He'll be a very popular cash game play, but with ownership meeting less in cash games than they do in GPPs, go ahead and pencil him in into your cash lineup. All right, third pick. It's going to be Patrick Reed at $9,200. Now, when you look at his year-long strokes gain approach stat and see that he's ranked 140th, it might give you a little bit of hesitation to roster him this week. And yes, he definitely struggled early in the year, actually up until about a month ago, with no top 15s from the middle of January until the middle of April. But he's been showing flashes lately, as he has three top 25s in his last three events played. Now, better yet, he's actually gained over nine strokes on the field with his approaches in those three tournaments. He's also gained nearly 11 strokes on the field with his putter in those same three tournaments. Now, he has good course history here, finished 26 in 2015, 8th here last year. If he can continue his current trend of good iron play and good putting, a top 10 or better is definitely possible for Patrick Reed this week. Now, my final pick. It's going to be Phil Mickelson at $7,700. Phil in cash could make some people squirm because of how wild and erratic his play is, especially off the tee. But when it comes to making cuts, he's actually made 14 consecutive cuts on tour. He has good course history here. Uh, other than his withdrawal in 2007 for a wrist injury and his withdrawal in 2012 for fatigue. He did shoot 79 in the first round. Phil has made seven cuts in a row here with four top 20s and two top fives. Like the other golfers I'm picking this week, there is a bit of a theme. Uh, even with Phil's inconsistencies off the tee, his saving grace has been his iron play. He's 24th in strokes gain approach for the year. Now, more recently, in his last three starts, Lefty has gained over 12 strokes on the field with his approaches. Even with all his boneheaded bogeys, uh, he still makes a ton of birdies, which is exactly what you want when it comes to DraftKings scoring. So let's recap. My four cash game cornerstone plays for the Memorial this week are Adam Scott at 9,800, Matt Kuchar at 9,400, Patrick Reed at 9,200, and Phil Mickelson at 7,700. Now, if you've been watching me long enough, the pricing of these golfers this week is not how I usually do my cash game cornerstones. I usually have like one 10K guy, one 9K guy, one 8K guy, and one 7K guy. I do that because I try to give you guys as many options as possible when it comes to rostering your final two golfers. And honestly, I'm trying to avoid having multiple 6K range golfers in my cash lineup since they're you know usually more volatile and less consistent. Now, this week, with the pricing that DraftKings has given us, having two 6K guys in your lineup can be done. And you can feel very, very comfortable about it. There are so many consistent studs. Maybe not studs, but consistent good golfers in the 6K range. You still have about you still have $13,900 to play with if you use these four golfers, even with three of them being in the 9K range. So that's it for me this week. Make sure you check out everything else the Fantasy Fanatics has to offer from the Cheat Sheet, the Strategy Center, uh, Brad's GPP video, iPod Todd's Euro video. Um, and that's it. Good luck. Let's win some money.